Hey everyone, this is the AV lecture for lab 13. Um, today we're going to be going over the muscles of the shoulder and the arm. We're going to go over um, some muscle basics which are going to be really important uh, moving forward with all these muscle labs. We'll discuss the expectations um, for your upcoming quizzes, um, especially these origins and insertions. Uh, and then we're going to go over um, all the muscles of the shoulder and the arm that you're responsible to know for these labs. Um, just starting off, a really basic idea of muscles, but it, it's one that's really important, is this idea that muscles can only work in one direction. And what I mean by that is muscles can only pull on things they cannot push. Um, and typically muscles are going to cross joints, and this is what allows body parts to move in response to muscles pulling on it. And if you recall from um, AB Lecture 12, um, flexion is a decreasing of a joint angle. Extension is the increase of a joint angle. Pronation is when you rotate your hands or your feet in, and supination is when you rotate your hands or your feet out. Adduction is moving back to the midline. Abduction is moving away from the midline. And opposing is your um, ability to grab something using your thumbs. And these actions, although we reviewed them in the previous AV lecture, um, these are going to be really important for all of these muscle labs. So this idea of muscles only working in one direction, they can only pull, they cannot push. So I want to illustrate this. Uh, we've got our, let's imagine this is our arm, this is our forearm and our hand. This red line is going to represent a muscle. And when this muscle contracts, it's going to pull in this direction. And so it's going to pull on our forearm here. And because of our humeral ulnar joint there, we're going to end up with the action of forearm flexion. Um, but now we're kind of in a bit of a conundrum. Um, our forearm is flexed, and we want to be able to put that forearm back to anatomical position. We want to be able to extend that arm. And so this is, uh, we're going to name our muscle here, muscle A. And how are we going to get the forearm back to anatomical position? How are we going to get it to extend? Can this muscle, can muscle A push against the forearm um, and extend the forearm? Well, we know that that's not the case because muscles only work in one direction. And this muscle pulls against the forearm. So really what we need is we need another muscle that's going to be on the opposite side, the posterior side of the arm and the forearm. And when this muscle contracts, it's going to also pull, but it's going to be pulling in the opposite direction of muscle A. And the resultant action is going to be forearm extension. And this is a really important concept to grasp early on in these muscle labs um, because we need two muscles to do the opposite actions. And we're going to call these muscles antagonistic pairs or antagonistic muscles. And all this means is muscles that do the opposite action. Some other um, important terms that we need to go over is the prime mover. And this is defined as the main muscle that's involved in a particular movement. So with muscle A, this is the prime mover for forearm flexion. And for muscle B, this is the prime mover for forearm extension. And we can also have other muscles that do the same action as the prime mover. And we're going to call those synergistic muscles or synergists. And these are just muscles that assist the prime mover with a particular action. Um, and so in, in this example, muscle C here would be a muscle that also forearm flexes the forearm. And so this is going to be a synergist for muscle A. And if we draw muscle D here, this would also be a forearm extensor. And so this is going to be a synergist for muscle B. Now we define parts of the muscle based on their attachment points on the body. And this point up here for our muscle A here, we're going to call this the origin. Because when this muscle contracts, this is the part of the muscle that doesn't move with contraction. And when our muscle does contract, this area, this attachment point on the forearm, actually moves with the contraction. And this is going to be called the insertion point of the muscle. 
and this is the part of the muscle that does move with contraction. So these are going to be two parts of the muscle that you're going to be responsible to know, the origin and the insertion. Um, not for all muscles, but we're going to highlight particular ones that you need to know these two points. Another way we can classify muscles is um, by whether or not it is an intrinsic or extrinsic muscle. And the way we define this is an extrinsic muscle is going to be a muscle that acts outside the region of its origin. So on this image here, we have an origin here and our insertion is here. And so when this muscle contracts, it originates on the arm, but the action is done on the forearm. And so this muscle acts outside of the region of its origin. And so we call this an extrinsic muscle. Conversely, we can have intrinsic muscles. And this is going to be a muscle that acts inside the region of its origin. So here we have a muscle that originates on the hand and then it's going to insert also in the hand region. And so the action is going to occur in the same region where the muscle originates. And we call this an intrinsic muscle. So now let's dive into some of these muscles. Um, for, your, for your upcoming quiz, uh, you are going to be responsible to know the location and the names, one action, one synergist and one antagonist for any muscle that we go over in this AV lecture. In addition to that, there are six muscles that you will also need to know one origin and one insertion. And those muscles are listed here, the trapezius, the deltoid, the pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, biceps brachii, and triceps brachii. Now on this PowerPoint, if there is an asterisk next to it, this means that is a muscle of the six that you're supposed to know one, excuse me, one origin and one insertion. And then if it has a little dash here, this means um, it is a muscle that's part of the rotator cuff group. Now these images are um, taken from models that you're gonna see in lab. Um, and we're showing two muscles here, the trapezius and the latissimus dorsi. First, let's go over the trapezius. This one's found through here. Um, it's this big muscle here. And the origin, there are two origins here, the posterior occipital bone, um, so the back of your head, and then also C7 through T12. So it's um, kind of got a lot of, a lot of origins here to choose them. You only need to pick one of them, so whichever one you like, um, just remember that one for the quiz and stick with it. The insertion is going to be at three spots, the clavicle, um, the acromion process, which is on the scapula, right? It's lateral on the scapula. And then the scapular spine, which is shown here, um, that's gonna be again, posterior on the scapula. Now there's three of them here. Remember, you only need to know one, so just pick one that you like and stick with it. Now the action for this muscle is, it's going to extend the head. So anytime you look up, you're using your trapezius abducts the head, move your head away from the midline, rotates the scapula, adducts the scapula, brings it to the midline, and also fixes the scapula, so holds the scapula in place. Again, you only need to know one of these for the quiz, so pick one that you like and stick with it. Now for the latissimus dorsi shown down here, this is another muscle we're responsible for the origin and the insertion. And again, this is a big muscle. It's got a lot of origins here. Um, T7 through T12, all the lumbar vertebrae, all this, the whole sacrum, S1 through S5, the iliac crest on the ilium, and then all of our ribs, all of our 12 ribs. So pick one that you like, stick with that for your quiz. The insertion, if we were to, um, and in lab you'll do this, if you were to follow this muscle down, you're going to see that it, it funnels down to one point and that is on the humerus, and it's the inner tubicular groove of the humerus. And if you remember from the bones, that's going to be that groove that's in between those tubercles um, on the proximal portion of your humerus. The actions are going to be extend the arm. So extending the arm, 
is think of it as pulling it back like this. Um, adducts the arm, moving it back to the midline. Medially rotating the arm, so if you were to go like this, almost like pronation, but it's really, um, pronation is more for the hand. Medially rotating would be your arm. And then draws the shoulder inferiorly, so if you're going to pull your shoulders down, um, that would be um, done by the latissimus dorsi. Again, just pick one that you like for the actions and stick with it. Now on the anterior portion of the body, we've got two muscles here. We've got the pectoralis major. This is one for our origins and insertions. Um, this is going to be the origin. It's going to be medial here. And so we've got um, an origin on the clavicle here, the sternum, and then also um, some rib cartilage in the first seven ribs. So pick one of these that you like and stick with it. The insertion is going to be the crest of the greater tubercle. And just like we did with the latissimus dorsi, if we were to follow this muscle down, um, we see that it funnels down and it's going over to the arm. And it's going to be on that greater tubercle. So we've got the greater and lesser tubercle on the proximal portion of our humerus. In between them is that inner tubicular groove of the humerus, the insertion for latissimus dorsi. But for the pectoralis major, um, this is going to be inserting on the um, greater tubercle. And if we just, you know, we know that this is the origin, we know that this is the insertion. When this muscle contracts, it's going to pull medially, it's going to pull towards the origin or towards the sternum. And so what do you think the action is going to be? Well, it makes sense that it's going to adduct the arm. It's going to pull the arm back to the midline. Um, it's also going to flex the arm. So I told you this is extending the arm. Holding your arm up like this, this would be arm flexion, and then also immediately rotating the arm. You've got three actions here. Pick one that you like and stick with it. For the pectoralis, uh, pectoralis major here, this is one that you do not need to know origins and insertion. You just need to know the action of it. And this is going to be another muscle that is going to um, adduct the arm. So now we're looking at um, the superficial shoulder, so this area here. And the first muscle we're going to go over is our deltoid. And this is a real confidence builder for students. Um, this is one that we need to know, origins and insertions. And so we have an origin on the clavicle. We also have an origin on the acromion process of the scapula, on that lateral side of the scapula. And then also on the spine of the scapula, the posterior portion of your scapula. The insertion, if we were to funnel this down, we see that it's going down about halfway to the, uh, down the humerus. And if we remember back from those early bone labs, we had a feature called the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus, and this is where your deltoid inserts. And so we have an origin um, up here on the shoulder. We have an insertion down here on the arm. When this muscle contracts and pulls, it's going to pull towards the origin. And so we're going to have a muscle that abducts the arm. It pulls the arm away from the midline. And it's also going to, because of these other origin points, it's going to flex and also extend the arm. If we were to look deep to the uh, deltoid, we've got a bunch of muscles that make up the rotator cuff group. And this first one here is going to be called the supraspinatus. Just to orient yourselves, this is going to be um, we're looking posteriorly from the posterior side. So this is going to be the scapular spine. So anything above the spine of the scapula is going to be superior. So supra makes a lot of sense. And then spinatus refers to the spine of the scapula here. And this muscle, all these, group, all these muscles of the rotator cuff are going to stabilize the shoulder joint. They're going to hold the glenohumeral joint um, in place. Um, so if we have a supraspinatus, superior to the spine of the scapula, inferior to the spine of the scapula is infraspinatus, okay? Also part of the rotator cuff group, and it's going to stabilize the shoulder joint. So these two are going to be synergists. Um, our next muscle is here. It's called the teres minor, okay? Also part of the rotator cuff group, so it stabilizes the shoulder joint. Synergist to infraspinatus, synergist to supraspinatus. And then the last muscle here is the teres major, and uh, notice that it does not have a little dash here so it's not part of the rotator cuff group. This muscle has a different action. It's going to laterally rotate the arm. So it's going to rotate the arm out. Now there's four muscles of the rotator cuff group and so the other one, the last one, is going to be um, on the 
anterior side, deep in the shoulder, and this is called the subscapularis. So it's gonna be um, beneath the scapula, um, hence subscapularis. And again, this is part of the rotator cuff group. It's got a little dash here. So it stabilizes the shoulder joint, and it's also going to medially rotate the arm. So rotate the arm back in. Now we're moving on to the anterior portion of our arms. So we're looking at this area here. And the first muscle that we've got is the biceps brachii. Everybody knows about the biceps brachii. It's that big muscle in your arm here. Um, if you do, um, if you're, if you work out a lot in the gym, you probably see people doing um, um, bicep brachii curls. And so they're really working this, this muscle here when they do that exercise. This is one that we need to know origin and insertion. So we've got two origins here. We've got one on the coracoid process of the scapula, okay, and then the superior margin of the glenoid fossa. So um, uh, just above the, um, the glenoid fossa where the, the head of the humerus fits in to the glenoid fossa on the scapula. So two of those origins, um, you, you just need to pick one that you like and stick with it for the quiz. Notice how the biceps brachii funnels down to just one point. That's the insertion. And it's that radial tuberosity. Remember, that, was, that became really important to determine right or left for um, your radius. So radial tuberosity is where your biceps brachii inserts. And the action here, if we just think about this, an origin up here, an insertion down here, when this muscle flexes and contracts, it's going to pull towards the origin. And so we're going to have a muscle that flexes the arm. So it pulls our arm up like this, also flexes the forearm. And this muscle is also going to supinate the hand. So rotate the hand out. Only um, you need to know just one action here. There's three of them to pick from. Choose the one that you like and stick with it. If we were to look deep to the biceps brachii, we've got a muscle here called the coracobrachialis. And the action here is going to flex the arm, and it's also going to adduct the arm, so pull the arm back to the midline. Because this muscle flexes the arm, it's going to be a synergist to the biceps brachii. And then we also have a muscle here, the brachialis, shown here. And this muscle, also a synergist to the biceps brachii, is going to flex the forearm. Now we're looking at the posterior side of the arm. And we just have one muscle here that we need to know, and it's the triceps brachii. We, this is another one that um, oftentimes people will spend a lot of time um, exercising to get those big triceps brachii. There's, um, as the name suggests, tri, there's going to be three origins. So the first is the lateral surface of the humerus. There's also an origin on the posterior surface of the humerus and then the infraglenoid tuberosity of the scapula. So that little tuberosity that's just below the glenoid fossa on the scapula. The insertion here, there's gonna be two, the olecranon process. And if we recall the olecranon process, this is our funny bone, right? It's gonna be um, on our ulna, and it's that part of your ulna that really sticks out and kind of makes that, makes the pointy part of your elbow. Um, and then also the tuberosity of the ulna, this is where there's gonna be another insertion. Just need to pick one that you like and stick with it. For the actions, this muscle is going to extend the arm, it's going to extend the forearm, and it's also going to adduct the arm. And that is it for the muscles for 13. We are gonna go over, in the next AV lecture, muscles for the forearm and the hand.